Hello, this is Siddharth Thamber, and you are listening to the Regenerative Medicine Report. On today's episode, I want to discuss one of the pillar concepts in regenerative medicine called orthobiologics. This is an essential aspect of regenerative medicine, and it's critical that it's understood and discussed because it's one of the um, baseline and um, pivotal foundations for understanding regenerative medicine. So orthobiologics, when you break it down, ortho indicating the musculoskeletal system uh, and bone biologics indicating some kind of live cellular material. Um, the biologic component is important because it's a contrast to synthetic medications, which are not derived from live um, uh, biologic or cellular um, organisms or material. Uh, the difference is key because if you are injecting a synthetic medication, um, some things need to be placed exactly in the right area. Other things do not need to be. As an example, steroid medications are fat soluble and do not require to be delivered exactly where they need to offer treatment. Biologic materials, on the other hand, the nature of how they work, whether it's by directly uh, utilizing cells to cause an effect or whether it's by the growth factors that are pulled in uh, due to the biologic application of a treatment, um, it's critical that they are applied exactly where they're needed. So as an example, if you are treating a torn tendon, it's not good enough if you're treating a shoulder torn tendon to be injecting that as an IV medication. It's not good enough to be injecting that into the shoulder joint if the tendon is the problem. And to take it even further than that, it's not good enough to be injecting just the tendon you need to be applying that at the precise location where the tendon is injured. That's different than when it comes to how medications are typically delivered. The next concept that's important is to understand autologous versus allogenic cells and, and treatments. Autologous meanings coming, means coming from yourself versus allogenic, which means coming from somebody else. Autologous treatments include things such as platelets and platelet-rich plasma, bone marrow-derived stem cells, fat-derived cellular treatments including stromal vascular fraction, which is a stem cell treatment, or just fat preparation treatments that offer structural support, as well as other cell-based treatments. Platelets come in a few different varieties. Platelet-rich plasma is a treatment where you're using your own blood to create a high concentration of platelets. By varying the concentration of the platelets, you can get a different sort of effect in either a joint, a tendon, or in a ligament. Or you can also create what's called platelet lysate, which is taking those same platelets, cracking them open, and just taking the growth factors from that. That can be beneficial for treating nerve or ligamentous injuries. You then also have bone marrow derived stem cells from your own bone marrow. You can isolate a high concentration of what's called bone marrow aspirate concentrate. Within that concentrate, you have multiple different types of cell lines and growth factors. The ones that are best understood include uh, mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. You also have a high concentration of platelet-rich plasma. You also have a high concentration of certain anti-inflammatory biologic molecules, including IRAP as well as alpha-2 macroglobulin. You then have fat-based treatments. Uh, currently in the United States, stromal vascular fraction, which is how you create a stem cell concentrate from fat, is not legal. In order to create SVF, stromal vascular fraction, you need to use an enzyme called collagenase, which at the, the time that I'm discussing right now is considered illegal by the Food and Drug Administration. 
You can use fat in other ways, such as for structural support, where you take a small sample of fat from a small liposuction. Without dissolving the fat, you can create a structural get graft from that, and that can have some benefit for certain types of tendon uh, or meniscus tears as well. And then lastly, you have various other cellular uh, biologic treatments from your own blood. These include things currently include alpha-2 macroglobulin, which is a powerful anti-inflammatory, as well as IRAP, or interleukin-1 receptor antagonist protein. That's, again, a very strong anti-inflammatory. You then also have what's called platelet-poor plasma. That is a portion of the blood that is removed when you want to create platelet-rich plasma. That platelet-poor plasma has some benefit as well and can help with certain types of muscle injuries. So that's helpful also. In contrast, you have allogenic treatments. These are essentially cellular and biologic tissue and treatments that come from, um, that don't come from you, that come from somebody else. So in the United States, the only ones that are currently um, legally allowed to be used include amniotic um, and other birth cord fluid derived uh, material. In order to be used in the United States, these um, biologic treatments need to go through a fairly rigorous process, including gamma irradiation and essentially pulverizing this into a powder and then having this rehydrated at the bedside at the time of treatment. Multiple organizations have looked at what are these treatments and what's in them. There are no live cells. So while they are frequently called umbilical cord or amniotic fluid stem cell treatments, there's no live stem cells. That's important because it, there is a difference between using growth factors, which you get in these sort of amniotic fluid treatments or including platelet-rich plasma treatments, and using a treatment such as a uh, bone marrow-derived stem cell treatment. The ability of mesenchymal and hematopoietic stem cells to signal to other cells to either function differently or, diff or better or to create other types of signaling effects is a key aspect for how a live stem cell treatment works. That's different than some of these other types of treatments that are strictly growth factors, including the amniotic fluid treatments, which can still have some benefit, but need to be considered in a different way than a live stem cell treatment. They're more along the lines of a growth factor or platelet-rich plasma treatment. People have also heard about embryonic stem cell treatments or other types of live stem cell treatments from other people. Those are not legally allowed in the United States. Uh, the one exception would be for non-orthopedic use, mainly if you're having a bone marrow transplant for certain types of cancers. Um, some of the potential issues in using live cells from another person include what's called graft versus host disease, where um, uh, the live cellular treatment actually creates a reaction in the person who's receiving it. So there's some potential issues there, and it's certainly not something that's commonly done in the orthobiologic or regenerative medicine world. And then lastly, there's also cultured stem cells. This is actually using your own cells from your bone marrow and growing them out to a very high concentration and then re-injecting them. The benefit of that is you have a stronger, higher concentration of cells. Essentially, the downside is that currently that is not legally allowed in the United States. So uh, again, another one that is um, possibly part of the armamentarium of orthobiologics and regenerative medicine, but really not one that's really utilized too much because of its uh, restricted regulatory use. And then, of course, there's the issue of live versus dead cells. I talked about amniotic fluid. Um, uh, that's a key aspect to remember. Um, uh, I've talked about the different sort of concentrations of platelets that can be created as well. We also talked about culturing cells as well, where you're actually increasing the number of cells. Some good, general, solid considerations that you want to consider. As much as possible, try to use your own cells preferentially. Why? Number one, um, the chance of having a reaction to your own cells versus somebody else's cells, dramatically less. 
all right? Certainly when it comes to live cells. Um, but even if you have a amniotic fluid product that has dead cells, you can still have potential issues in terms of reacting to foreign material. That is much, much less common when you're using your own cells. In addition, if you're using your own cells, the benefit is the risk of infection really lies strictly in the handling at the bedside and within clinic. If you're using appropriate um, uh, medical precautions and safety precautions uh, and, and hygiene and cleanliness precautions, that's a relatively low risk. There have been reports of amniotic and umbilical cord fluid products that have had various contaminants. Um, and that's not surprising when you talk about something that is handled by multiple different people, multiple different hands before it even gets into the clinic. So as much as possible from a safety standpoint, it's best to try to use your own cells. There's sometimes discussion about, is it possible that is as you get too old that do not have enough cells to make a difference? So when it comes to platelets, that's not correct. You can get enough um, platelets from your own blood. Um, for most people, their uh, blood cell counts, platelet counts, and white blood cell counts don't significantly um, decrease as they get older unless they have some kind of condition that's causing that or medication that's causing that. In addition, there's good evidence that if you're using your own cellular stem cell products, including bone marrow aspirin concentrate, that even if your cell count is lower as you age, you can still get an excellent result in terms of pain relief and functional improvement by using your own cells. So again, you can get a good, efficient response by using your own cells uh, with lower risk as well. So I would strongly recommend using your own cells as much as possible. Some other kind of really key things to keep in mind when it comes to orthobiologic treatments. Uh, I think it's really important to have a realistic understanding of what these kind of treatments can do. Um, in a future episode, I'll probably talk more about how mesenchymal stem cells uh, um, can also be considered as medicinal signaling cells. And it may be important to really reconsider um, what, what is the kind of effect we're getting from cellular treatments. If you have a recent onset injury, uh, certain types of soft tissue injuries that are relatively recent, those are things that have the potential to um, properly um, repair or heal. When you have something that's more chronic, degenerative, that's due to chronic degenerative instability, your goal is not really to rebuild tissue. It's to create a more optimal healing environment that results in a better functioning structure on a physiologic, anatomic, and cellular basis that'll give less pain and better function. Those are the real key things you want to be thinking about. How do you get better relief of pain and better function as opposed to how do you get a image on an x-ray or MRI to look better because those are really uncertain and unrealistic. There are some exceptions, certain types of soft tissue injuries. If you have a bone bruise or bone marrow uh, edema or bone marrow lesion due to chronic stress, that can improve as well. If you have avascular necrosis, that can improve. But you have to have the right kind of expectations. Uh, in addition, when it comes to orthobiologics, there's a lot of subtlety involved. There's a lot of ways you can layer these treatments on. There's a lot of ways you can change subtly the sort of um, treatment that you're trying to use. So working with a physician that has a really keen understanding of how to use orthobiologics is key. Uh, on top of that, uh, working with a physician who has a keen understanding of how the musculoskeletal system works, who understands concepts such as prolotherapy and is really highly skilled with using ultrasound and x-ray guidance to deliver these is essential to get the best kind of uh, response. And then lastly, in that regard, these treatments need to be delivered under expert image guidance at that sub-millimeter level, not close to the right spot, in the exact right spot. That's how biologic treatments work. That's how you'll get a good response from an orthobiologic treatment. Orthobiologics. It is fundamental 
understanding for any physician and any individual who will be receiving this treatment. As a physician who offers regenerative medicine treatments, it's essential to understand what orthobiologics are. It's a key pillar to what regenerative medicine is about. I hope this episode has given you some sense and a flavor of what orthobiologics are, um, um, where they come from, what they're meant to do, and um, I'll be referring to them frequently in future episodes as well. Thank you for your time. I hope this is enjoyable. Leave me some comments if you want to um, uh, learn more about specific aspects or if you have specific questions. Thank you for your time. Live well. Bye-bye.